Hi, I'm Sai. Today I'm going to be reviewing this Wavelink USB 4 NVMe SSD enclosure. I'm excited about this. The company that makes it reached out to me and asked me to do a review of it based upon a review that I did of another SSD enclosure. I'm going to be comparing it to the Acasis 40 gigabytes per second SSD enclosure that I reviewed before. And we're going to compare read write speeds on both of these external SSD. SSD enclosures. Both of these SSD enclosures have 40 gigabytes per second transfer speeds. Now those transfer speeds will be bottlenecked by the type of cable that you are using. So a USB 4 cable with a USB 4 port or a Thunderbolt port is needed to get the maximum speed that you can get out of one of these enclosures. Now these enclosures don't include the actual hard drive. So I'm going to be using this WD Black SN770 game drive inside the enclosure. Now I already have this exact same hard drive inside the Acasis SSD enclosure, so we're going to compare speeds directly to each other. I'm going to show you how to put your hard drive into the Wavelink SSD enclosure, and we're going to go ahead and set it up on our computer so you can see exactly how to set up your file system. But why might you want to use an enclosure like this? Well, I use my SSD enclosure with the external hard drive to edit videos, and the reason that I do it is because it is first of all faster than my computer and also it saves hard disk space on my computer for other tasks because I'm running my video editing software directly from the external drive. You can set things up like iMovie or Final Cut Pro or even your photos album on your external drive. It'll run faster and it'll save you all that space on your regular hard drive. Just to give you an idea of how fast your external drive can be using one of these SSD and closures with your external SSD inside. My Mac Mini has read write speeds of something around 1500 to 1600 megabytes per second. Using this SSD with my other SSD enclosure, I've got speeds up to about 2700 megabytes per second for read and write. Now this is capable of up to 5000 megabytes per second. The WD Black is. What I think is cool is this one is supposed to be faster than my Acasis SSD. SD enclosure. So we'll see and we'll show you all of that with our speed test. First of all, we have my Acasis SSD enclosure here and you can see that it has this USB 4 or Thunderbolt cable. It's good for USB-C outlets as opposed to USB-A. And then you can see here that we have the port that it's plugged into and the one next to it right here. So those are both Thunderbolt ports or USB 4 ports. So if you want to maximize the speed you can get from having a case like this with a good SSD SSD, you're going to need to have a USB 4 port. Let's go ahead and start by opening up the Wavelink box. And you can read some of these finer details up here. It has full aluminum alloy housing. You can see what it comes with inside the box here and the specifications. And it looks pretty inside here. There's the case itself. Those are rubber screws. You've got your aluminum strip and your silicone strip, your USB 4 cable, some instructions, and a carrying case, it looks like. So it looks like this strap could connect to the top of your SSD enclosure. And unlike the other SSD enclosure, this one does have a cooling fan. There is no cooling fan in the other one. So that could be good and bad. It might make it more noisy, but it also will be good in the sense that it will keep it cooler. And the housing is alloy. And for heat dissipation, you've got your silicone strip plus your aluminum strip. And we're going to go ahead and put that all together now. This is your USB 4 port. And you can see it's got vents all around it for cooling. And these indentions are also for cooling. So we'll go ahead and take it apart and it just pops off. No screws or anything like that. We'll get our SSD drive ready to insert and you can see this particular SSD is an M key and our Wavelink SSD enclosure is compatible with the M key. Also I just want to let you know too the size of the SSD that could go into our enclosure is a 2280 and here is our SSD. And the first step is to go ahead and line it up here. And you can see it lines up just like this. And you just very gently push it in. So that's the first step. Once that's in, we're going to want to get our screw, which is a rubber screw in this case, I believe. 
and it looks like it came with an extra one just in case. We'll save that in case it's ever needed. You can see here, put it in just like this and push it down in. Now we're ready to apply our heat dissipating strips and we'll go ahead and do the silicone first. And there are two sides to this. Apply the silicone just like that and we'll remove this from the back of the aluminum and have the piece facing up be the part where we remove the plastic. And now we can enclose the enclosure. Let's go hook it up and format our SSD. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug our USB 4 cord directly into our Mac Mini into the Thunderbolt port. And you can see that the light immediately came on. Now you can see on the computer screen that it says to go ahead and eject, ignore, or initialize. And we're gonna choose initialize. And we are gonna choose this WD black because that is what is inside of our Wavelink case. And we're going to go ahead and say erase. And I'm gonna leave this at default. And because I'm using an Apple computer, the APFS is the ideal for Apple settings, but if I were going to want it to be used on multiple computers, then I would want to choose XFAT. But I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it at APFS, and I'm gonna name it to external to for my purposes, and then I'm going to say erase. You can see that the erase process is complete. So I click done and now my external two device is ready to be used. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit disk utility for now. And one thing I'm gonna to do to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples, you can see if I open my old external drive, I've got all of these things inside. So I'm gonna put all of these things inside my new external drive called external two before we do our speed test so we're comparing apples to apples. So I'm gonna go ahead on my old SSD enclosure and highlight all of these, and I'm going to copy them by dragging them into my new SSD. Keep in mind, we are using the exact same SSD inside both of these external drives so we can compare directly. And I don't know if you can hear it right now, but I can hear the fan working inside the Wavelink, but it's not very loud. So I'll go ahead and allow all of this to transfer. Okay, as you can see, all of the files have transferred and it took probably less than five minutes, but you can see these are all the files that I transferred and I transferred them all over onto our external two, which is our SSD that's inside our wavelength. So now we can do a speed test and compare like to like. But before we do that speed test, I also wanna just point out to you that we're gonna do a speed test on the Mac Mini. We're gonna do another speed test on this other hard drive, which is a five terabyte hard drive, but it's not a high speed drive. And it's also plugged into a USB-A port as opposed to a USB-4 USB-C port. So it's gonna be much slower, you'll see. And then we'll compare the Acasis external SSD to our wavelength. And just so you know, we just copied a lot of files. I feel a little bit of heat on here, not too much. And um, our Acasis also feels warm, but not too warm. But let's go ahead and do the speed test. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and open up this speed test here. And if we just click start here, it's going to do a speed test for write and read on the drive of our computer by default. So we'll start with that. And you can see we're getting up a little bit over 1500 megabytes per second for read and for write speeds. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and stop this test and we're going to find a different drive. And in this case, we're going to use our Acasis external drive just so you can see the speeds it gets. And we'll start our speed test. And you can see it's getting 2,700 megabytes per second approximately for both read and write speeds, which is very good. So we're gonna go ahead and see what our Wavelink is getting. So we'll stop this one and we'll select our target drive again. And in this case, the external two is our Wavelink. We're gonna open it and start our speed test. And it is getting 28 to 3,000, so 2,800 to 3,000 megabytes per second read and write speeds. So that is better than our Acasis is getting. So that's pretty amazing. Now, for comparison's sake, I'm just gonna show you how 
this drive does, which is not going to be fast at all, you'll see. But we'll go ahead and stop this, select our target drive, and in this case, it's this one. And we're going to just say open and do our speed test and it's going to go very slow. As you can see, it's getting up to about 140 megabytes, but it's gonna drop down, and you can see our speed test is getting close to finishing up here. And there you see it, our speed test finished, and it was approximately 78 megabytes per second write speed and 72 megabytes read speed for our five terabyte external hard drive that is not a high speed drive. And for comparison's sake, we did 2,800 to 3,000 read write speeds on our Wavelink, which is actually amazing. It's also great that our Wavelink has done better than our cases using the exact same hard drive with the exact same amount of storage available on it. And let's just feel for the sake of seeing if they are heating up. And as of right now, they are both warm. I'd say the Wavelink feels slightly warmer by touch and I can hear the fan going. It's not too loud though, which is nice. So finally, what I wanna show is that on this external drive, this is the old one, I have Final Cut Pro and other things running from it. And just so you can see, in this Final Cut Pro library, if I open it up, you'll see where it's located if I click here. And in the case of a Mac, I'm just gonna say control click and I'm gonna say reveal in Finder. And you can see that I'm running Final Cut Pro from the external drive. So what I'm curious to see is if I go ahead and quit Final Cut Pro, if I can just open Final Cut Pro in my external two location and if all the information has copied correctly, you can see I'm in external two now and I'm gonna to go to Final Cut Pro and open. And it looks like everything is copied in here. I'm just going to see if we click on the library and reveal it in Finder. And yes, you can see that it is actually working and now I can edit in Final Cut Pro external from my new external drive as well. And I basically have a backup of everything that was on that external hard drive now too. I'm not gonna show you how to do it right now, but as you can see, we are running Final Cut Pro and other applications from our external drive, which is in our SSD enclosure. And that is one of the things that I have found to be the best uses for these high speed enclosures with a good SSD, is that you get these high read write speeds and transfer speeds. And in some cases that will make them even work faster than your computer. And you're saving the hard drive space on your computer's hard drive. So your computer can function better because the hard drive isn't overloaded with a bunch of files. So I really like the Wavelink USB 4 NVMe SSD enclosure. It worked excellently with our high quality SSD that we put into it. You saw that its transfer speeds were even higher than the SSD enclosure that we compared it to that is also a good SSD enclosure. And I feel good about recommending an SSD enclosure like this so that you can run some of your applications off of it and save the space on your computer's hard drive. So I hope you liked my review of this Wavelink USB 4 NVMe SSD enclosure. If you did like this review, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and share this video. If you want to help support this channel, please use the links in the description or scan the QR code in this video to purchase. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.